Hi, I'm Sarah Zubiata Bennett, your host of the Dallas Express video podcast. Today we have the pleasure of welcoming Payman Palavan to the show. Payman is a renowned lighting designer, car enthusiast, and fashion fabricator, a true jack of all trades. After we finish at the studio, we'll get an exclusive look at Payman's custom cars, shoes, clothing, and lighting designs up close and personal. You don't want to miss it. I'm just dying to hear more about how you came to be. How did you come to Dallas, Texas? I came to U.S. from France, mm -hmm. and I was born in Iran. And I, I left the country during the revolution of the, when the king of Iran left Iran. Went to France, grew up there, then came to U.S. And my main thing was studying motion picture and video technology. My whole background in lighting design comes from the film background. So I studied in USC Film School, mm -hmm. graduated from Brooks Motion Picture School in Santa Barbara, worked in the industry, then came to Dallas, started the, this company in audio, video, and lighting design. And all the stuff I have learned, people always ask me where you learn lighting, it was from theatrical background. Mm -hmm. And design was from theatrical background. So everything I gathered from film school and working in the film industry kind of helping this ventures that have done. And how are you now being in Dallas? Um, talk to me about your different businesses that you own. So my main business is audio, video, and lighting design. I've done that for over 30 years. And it's creating atmospheric and environment design, whether if it's a, for a resident, restaurant, hotel, private yacht, jets. It's creating, combining lighting, audio, video, music, atmosphere, and work with interior designers mm -hmm. to hide all that technology and complement to it. A good lighting design shouldn't be seen. A good audio video design should complement the interior design. Would you tell me a little bit about how you got started in fashion? About, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, I dated this lady. And um, I was just wearing t-shirts and jeans mostly. and. Um, she told my assistant once that how come I never dress up in suits and white collar shirt? So that kind of triggered, and then I kind of questioned myself why I don't dress that way. So if you're not the proper height and proper dimension and you're athletic, average clothes off of a shelf doesn't fit you right. And I'm a designer and I, I know CAD program pretty good and I studied it. And I had, a lot of friends in the fashion industry. So they taught me about fabrics, structure. So that helped. So now, where do you merchandise? Where are your items sold? Privately, mostly. It's my existing client that I had for my audio video business, mm -hmm. which is most of them pretty high profile clients. I always like to probe a little bit and gain an understanding as to how satisfied you are with the business climate locally in Dallas. How are you in terms of your satisfaction with our community leaders here in Dallas? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not a very political person, mm -hmm. but I have had my run into local politics. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the elected leaders, um, the only kind of running I had with the local district governmental leaders in Dallas, I have a design studio in design district on Oakland. And I bought that about 20 something years ago, mm -hmm. before design district. Was design, design district, district. Yeah. And in fact, many at five, six o'clock, you stop at the red light, you kind of looked over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. So, and, I, and anything in South of Whitecliff you bought, you could live in. Mm -hmm. So it was- That's right, Warehouse thing. And a uh, long time ago, I went to a divorce and after us, that whole thing was final. I said I always want to live in a place I work rather than having two places. Mm -hmm. And the place that I work, I wanted to look like a home uh, that become there most of the time mm -hmm. rather than going home and having this big house. Mm -hmm. So I bought this warehouse uh, and got it out and I created a village inside. Oh. And I created a village that kind of reminds me of villages of back home. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I covered all the windows and I used that for my lighting structure design oh. because it was always dark. Okay. So I can create different environmental lighting. And, the and, and I was perfectly happy there for a long time. 
I lived there, I worked there, I still love the place. But the city leader that you brought, there was a restriction that you couldn't have any nightclubs mm -hmm. in design district. So okay. the restaurant was coming in as it was getting famous, uh, the design district apartments, high rises, and they tried to open a nightclub next door to my studio. Mm -hmm. And all the neighborhood gathered around, went to the city, said, you cannot open a nightclub here. And with the whole, every, all the neighborhood fight at the club. One, the owner of the building that rented the club was part of the city, city of Dallas, was appointed to. And then we fought it, they always delayed it, it was back and forward, then TABC shut them down or they didn't give them allowance, then they reapplied as a restaurant. A restaurant that opens at 10 p.m. and has the food, so they got around that problem even though there was a law that it was against nightclub, they just stepped over and the whole neighborhood fought at it, but they, I believe the city corruption and the people that was there allowed this thing to come through. So that's my little experience mm -hmm. with elected leaders that you, you feel like you, know, you live in a country that compared to where I came from, mm -hmm. that it was bribery and so on. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed here just in downtown Dallas, that stuff still goes on in the background. But overall, <laughs> I'm pretty happy. And if you can spend a little bit of time talking to me about your cars. Okay. How did you get involved with your car restoration creation? It goes back about 15 years ago. One of my close friends and a client, mm -hmm. he asked me uh, to come to Indiana. Mm -hmm. And he wants, so he has a project, he has a few cars, and can I help him with lighting his private car museum? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, well, a few cars. So I flew with him to his um, farm, because I actually called it a ranch. He said, no, in Indiana, we do not have ranch, we have farms. <laughs> he corrected me on that. <laughs> so we went there, and he had this compound with all these different buildings, and he had a kind of a barn area that he had about 20 cars in. But he showed me the plan what they were building. So I helped them design a 1950s bar restaurant, mm -hmm. something you see in 50s style. Had a diner, had the old gas stations outside, and then from the diner, it opens up and it went to this big warehouse. And uh, he had about 300 cars that he brought. And we designed this that every, per years of the car, we played the famous music of that year over a speaker that was isolated over those, those cars only. So as you walked around the museum, it, uh, it brought the memories and hit songs from those genre and those years. At the very beginning of the museum, there was a 1962 red Corvette that just caught my attention. Yeah. And I thought, man, that was very unique and so on. And that kind of just triggered me, and I did this whole museum. And after that, after you deal with one, then people hear about it. So I did more private museums. This passed by, and you know, I got to a point, and you know, I always think about this, let me buy one of these cars. Mm -hmm. So I bought a 1958 Corvette, which I love that style. It reminds mm -hmm. me of the old Hollywood. Yes. Marilyn Monroe, James oh, Dean. Oh, me too, yes. So the 50s car has certain curvature to them. Mm -hmm that the 60s and 70s don't. So it has certainly brings that Fedora hat look mm -hmm. from those genres. Mm -hmm. So I bought it, and everybody told me, you're gonna hate this car. So I bought one, I drove it, and they were right. It was not a comfortable, it's like a, you're driving something that when you get from a, a modern car yeah. into that, they drive like a, a go-kart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they bump you all over, they, they break down. Then, and I said, well, you know, this is a kind of, a, you know, sad that you have these beautiful cars, mm -hmm. but nobody really uses them. They just put them on display. And then I said, well, and so I was talking to a friend. I said, you know, there's a, there is an industry that gets these cars and modernize them. So they put new engine, mm -hmm. new suspensions, mm -hmm. new brakes, and make them more reliable. It would be great if you can modernize them, but keep all the original look. It's like an artist that gets, restores an old house. Mm -hmm. They make it look the way it was built, mm -hmm. but still has that charm of that. 
So uh, it becomes artwork now. Last year, they passed this bill because permitting was so backlogged in the city of Dallas. So now they allow other people or other certified engineers or architects to come in and move the permitting process forward themselves through these third parties. Have you noticed any type of backlog change for your projects, or does that really not impact too much of your um, workflow? I know that in Dallas, you had to have everything in a metal conduit, and that took longer to finish, and they took that, restric that res restriction that everything has to be in a metal conduit off. So that now, they, you know, it costs cheaper to do new construction, electrical work in that. But beside that, I haven't been really subjected to any of the restriction that they do. You know, commercial buildings is a lot tougher. Mm -hmm. So I know we had a lot of restriction with AT&T headquarters when we did the high rise uh, restructuring. Oh, yeah. uh, but you know, the city actually loved to have AT&T downtown. So they were very accommodating. That's right accommodating to have that because they put so much money in that score with the video walls and everything. Mm -hmm. So, but that was the toughest building I've done in, in that downtown. I've done the Stoneleaf Resident, Statler Hotel. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So I did all those projects, but AT&T was the, the most restriction. Got it, and so that, that large wall, you did that? The video design and yes. interior, yeah. Yes. Holy Lord. Yes. That's impressive. Thank you, thank you. And yes, I, I know that there's a big move to bring a bunch of different large business headquarters downtown. Mm -hmm. I know crime and homelessness is kind of mm -hmm. putting a damper on that. Do you have any type of homelessness and any crime that impacts your business locations down Originally, in Originally, when I bought my studio, mm -hmm. there was a lot of that. But since all the new stuff came down there, there's not much good. in design district anymore. Good, good, good. Because I know there's more patrol there. Yeah, but then you know, because of the, some of the nightclubs at the open, uh, we had a couple of shootings down there. Yep, I remember. Yeah, so that's not good. Yep. And you know, that's what happens when you bring to multi-zoning, when you have residents there, yep. and you opening nightclubs next door, just inviting trouble. And have they made any movement on that particular multi-zoning? No, it's still the same. I mean, we, I mean, the city of Dallas said they're gonna have what they call the, the uh, special group evaluate the situation mm -hmm. that was three years ago. So before uh, we walk away from this, and as we were talking about some of the other projects that you've done, I'm privy to the fact that you've done the lighting for a lot of kings, very, very high level people in this world. So you clearly are someone with a high degree of integrity and promise and commitment to what you can deliver. Can you talk to us about any of those projects? I've done stuff in Emirates. I've done stuff in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I've done um, um, a local businessman here that had a very large private yacht mm -hmm. that he commissioned me to do it. Um, and we flew to um, where they were building the yacht. And uh, I remember one time he calls me. It was middle of the night at 2 something AM. And I think he was in. Um, French Riviera, and I did something special for them on his upper deck. Uh, a, a logo with some special lighting that created, uh, when you have the fog machine come out, it projected the image in, over this fog. And, uh, and the captain didn't tell them that I did that. Oh, and I just wanted to do something that's extra. That's so sweet. And here I get a call, and I thought actually there was something wrong they're calling me. He told me that they just saw the effect, and all his guests were super impressed. And he wants to thank, call, he's calling me in the middle of the night to thank me that uh, I went well behind his expectation. And when a, a client of yours tells you that, that you do that extra effort and you create the, uh, something that sparks mm -hmm. that they don't expect, mm -hmm. always under promise, over, over deliver. deliver. Yes, sir. So congratulations. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so for your time. All right, let's head over to the shop club to check out some of Payman's custom cars. This is a haven for car enthusiasts, offering vehicle storage and so much more. It's an experience you have to see to believe. After that, we'll visit Payman's private warehouse in the design district where he operates his comprehensive lighting business, showcases his bespoke fashion designs, and even works on his cars. Oh my 
my goodness. This so, is fabulous. So let me give you guys a tour and you guys can walk. So this is our full bar for members only. We have uh -huh. private events here. This is our observation desk that we do a lot of events and parties here. Okay. Oh, wow. So down here is our barber shop. Okay, and this is our arcade room. Oh my God. And our racing simulation oh. machine. It's basically simulating a racetrack to practice here if you want to take your cars. Do you ever do this? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Can you show us? Okay. Wow. Do the real cars look like that on the wheel? Yeah, these are racing. Yeah, this is actually a racing car we pick. This way when you practice here, this way you don't wreck your cars. <laughs> anyway. Thank you so much for showing. <laughs> so this, uh, this section is for sale. It's members that they have their cars and they have oh. a few around. Little Birdie told me somebody likes a 1965 Mustang. This is one. <laughs> <laughs> this is you. another 65 Mustang convertible. Oh. oh, that is so cute. I want this. How beautiful. Yeah, it's a fun car. Holy Lord. This car was sitting for four and a half years and not moved. It was uh, belonged to one of my neighbors. And uh, I told him well, when I get a break, I would help him to fix it. Oh. And uh, he cannot wait till he gets it back. So this is a 427 Cobra engine. Dang. So we basically polished all the steel in there. It's a replica Shelby manufacturer. It's one of the better ones. Now that is a car. So this is our car wash bay. So you can wash your own car oh. or you can have the valet come wash it. Okay. Obviously it's in a, a conditioned area. They give you all the tools. And you can work on your own cars here if you know. Oh. So they're restoring the Jaguar. This oh. is another customer. My brother-in-law should be here. He should yeah. be here with me. Oh my God, he'd be asking all the great questions. So this Bronco is getting restored, new engine, new suspension, and it's gonna go for a toy to Key West, Florida. This is fantastic. It's so, so sexy. It's such a different world for me. And I'm sure a lot of people here too, right, that, that, are, that are gonna be watching. And that is what I think is just so unique and special. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this tour. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this might is. I've been here 30 years almost, 25 years maybe. Ew, oh my gosh, this lighting is gorgeous. Yeah, I designed this like a, a movie set when I had my studio. Uh huh. And everything here that you see about everything was drawn. A lot of love and a lot of special finishes was done to this place too make it look very authentic. I used to have a lot of events here and a lot of musicians perform on the stage uh -huh. here. And uh, my niece learned singing here. I can see why you'd stay here. Yeah, these are a few samples of the stuff I created. It's beautiful. Then here is our lighting technology, light uh, wiring when we do big projects. Mm -hmm. We have this, we stock a lot of stuff, equipment. This is one of the, my cars that I'm working on right now. Oh. It's a 1959 Corvette. So Look at we, you. we took everything off of it. It was a working car, actually. Yeah. We have done some work on the engine. I love it. 